Hello, I hope that through this video you are able to see the importance of LinkedIn, why you should set up your account, and why you should continue connecting and building up your LinkedIn account. Uh, LinkedIn is a social tool um, just like any other kind of social media. However, this is a professional networking social media channel. So the things that you want to put on LinkedIn should be geared more towards your professional life, not as much personal information or uh, things on LinkedIn. So you want to keep your LinkedIn personal. Um, you can connect with people, influencers, organizations, school districts, departments of education, thought leaders in whatever kind of education you might be going into, secondary, higher ed, elementary, early, early childhood education, any of those areas, you can start to learn from others on LinkedIn. Connect with them, get to know the, the things that are going on in whatever world of education you are a part of. Um, it's really easy to set up a LinkedIn account. What's hard is to get it up to where it should be for you and in, in what you want and hope others to perceive you by viewing your LinkedIn. And so setting it up is really easy. You, you just go to LinkedIn.com. You'll put your email. I would use your personal email. And then you set up a password. It'll pop you into a screen that looks very similar to what you're seeing on my screen. And it's going to always open up into your feed. And your feed is exactly that. Whatever you are following, choosing to view, groups that you're in, people that you follow, all of their postings and information is going to show in your feed. So your feed is as good as the people that you are following and the things that you are connecting with on this platform. I would have your resume or your CV is up while you are building your LinkedIn account because that will help you figure out what you should put into and where it should go in your LinkedIn account. So I always have my resume up in one screen, my LinkedIn up in another screen, and then I can copy and paste some things as well in different sections. Uh, you should all start to work on building that profile. Your profile is your personal brand. So what do you want to put out into that world? How do you want people to perceive you as an educator and as a professional? If you are up here on the me section, you can always go to view and edit your personal profile. The biggest things, nobody's going to look at your profile, nobody's going to connect with you without that background picture and that professional headshot. Our office in the exchange, which is located on the first floor of the library, does free professional headshots. You just simply need to, you can email me or um, go on Handshake to make an appointment to set up a professional headshot and your background picture should show whoever is viewing it a little bit about you and add to that personal brand that you're trying to create for yourself. So I have this quote up here. This quote is what I hope to personify. This quote is my tagline in my emails and this is who I believe that I am and I, who I want others to see me. Um, and so that is why I chose that. Other people might put some books and science stuff. If you're a science teacher, if you are an administrator, maybe some other different things, English teacher, like you could put all kinds of different things in your LinkedIn background. And if you just Google, If you just Google, uh, let's see, let's Google educator LinkedIn banner and you go to images, 
There's a whole bunch of things here that you can download and use as your LinkedIn background. You would simply right click on it, save it, and then you'd go back and add it to your background. The next most important thing is this headline. And all uh, any way that you edit LinkedIn, you're going to use these pencils over here. So if I click on this pencil, it's going to do my basic information. My headline is here. Uh, it used to be just it used to say college career and workforce development professional. Recently, I changed it to say what I do. So I serve others by helping them find where they belong in the workforce. And maybe I should change that to say in the workforce, but I'll leave it as is. Um, and then the hashtag be who is from my personal coaching business. Your, your industry, your education, this is all very basic information. And then if you have a professional portfolio on a website somewhere or you've created something like that that you want to showcase, add that link at the very top. So if you, if you go back and you look at mine, um, it's got my headline. I have what I talk about because I have mine in a creator mode. I can take the creator mode off at any time. Um, and then it will click and you can get to my website and view a little bit more about me. I'm gonna skip over the featured one for a minute. All of your activity will show here so you can go back and see what comments you've made, what videos you posted, what things that you have posted. So once you've got your headline, then you can do your about me section. My about me when I was early on in my professional career was very stuffy and it was very much like that, ver that first sentence, outcomes driven educator dedicated to connecting people to each other and opportunities that advance and develop career and social capital. Um, here's my, a little bit about my experience. And then it used to go on and on more about those types of things. And lately I have been trying to be more authentic in who I am and my brand. And so I put in here, I listen to podcasts, I'm at softball, I'm at I do all of these things. I love to take a good power nap. So you could, it could be a little bit more playful uh, if you chose to do so, but really what people go to this about me section is, is to know who you are and what types of things can I expect by, from you by connecting with you. And so the about me section is a really great place to say who you are, why are you an educator, why the certain type of education or the certain group of students that you work with, what is your philosophy of education, how do you hope to impact your students or your district or the community in which your school is in. Um, those types of things you can put in your about me section. And then I'm a huge nerd on all of these different personality tests. So I put all of mine in there. Uh, if you're interested, my favorites are Principles U and the, po the Positive Intelligence Saboteurs. Those have made the most impact in my life and like seeing the things that I do and recognizing certain things within myself. Um, I am happy to give you those uh, links if you, if you would like. But then I also go in my About Me section and talk about here are my specialties, here's what I'm really good at, and then here are some, some places that I struggle. Again, because I want my brand to be very authentic. And then you're gonna get into your experiences section. You're gonna start with the most recent, and this is where it really uh, is important to have your resume or your CV up at the same time, because I can edit these, I can add these, I can change the order of these. Um, if I edit them, 
um, my title, what type of employment, company, you could put location, you could put type, the dates, what is the industry that I'm in, what's the description of what it is I do, if I have any media that supports this. So maybe I have an example of a, uh, for educators, maybe I have an example of a lesson or some activities or some, some piece that I've written or published or something that goes along with that experience. I can add a media here and it could be a link. So it could be to a video of me teaching or having an interaction or uh, talking on some show or radio about something, or it could be maybe like a PowerPoint or a video that I created for my course. The plus sign is just going to allow you to add more of those positions. So each position that you have, you can add information to. <clears throat> I use the description. And put some and put some of my bullet points there or just some like a summary of what I did so some have a little bit more than others and some are more bullet point resume focused and some are just summaries you can choose to do however you may want if I have been with the same organization so I was with Goodwill Education Initiatives for a little over seven years in a couple different positions um, and they will put those you can you can have those all under one and so you can see how goodwill is up here but then here are the different positions that i had while i was there same with baldwin wallace college the different positions that i had within one organization and i i have non-education stuff up here too because there might be somebody that I connect with that uh, I served when I was a server and a bartender at a country club a really, really long time ago. They may have some job opportunities for my students. I have no idea. So I leave these things on here as a running list of all of the things that I have done. And then every time I wanna add a new profile, I just start with the core, right? So you're going to start with add education, add your position, add your skills, then go down to the recommended and start adding these additional, if you have them. Uh, my profile has all of them because I teach others on how to set up a LinkedIn account. So I do have the majority of those sections. So then you're going to go to your education, put in what you've got, where you got it what was your field of study make sure you put that in there some people don't and it just says they went to college but it doesn't say where or, or it doesn't say what they were earning any activities you could put a description here too you can add some skills that you got from this you can oops you can also Add media as well um, so maybe some cool research that you did or a project that you had to do with your course or maybe one of those you created some sort of virtual thing or lesson plans or some, something interesting that somebody might want to dive a little bit deeper into you can add here as well The licenses and certifications is where you're going to add your teacher licensure, any endorsements on your license, um, if you've gotten any project lead the way, special education, <clears throat> ENL endorsements on your license, anything like that can get added to the licenses and certifications. Some of these things I do on the, the side, some of these things um, have been actual legitimate certifications that that they have given me a credential for and so that somebody can actually go and verify that yes I did this so um, the Indiana Department of Education is on here 
You could add the credential URL in case somebody wants to look it up, but I have never added that and it has never been an issue, but I do have my teaching license listed on here. Volunteering experience you can put on here. Um, I volunteer as a mentor in a couple different capacities and then also with Hamilton County Emergency Management. So I've got all of those on here. I have a little bit about what I do in those positions. You could add whatever, however you're involved with your community, you can add that here in this section. The skills section, <clears throat> don't leave this out because people will search for human resource recruiters will use LinkedIn to search for you. And they're gonna search by specific words and experiences. And they have these things that they'll type in. And if you have these in your profile, your profile will be able to be found by them more easily. And you'll be more accessible to those recruiters. And so um, you can add skills and you can, once you start to fill in your profile, it will start to suggest skills to you. So you can choose some of these if you've got them. Uh, if those are not on there and you really wanna highlight that you have um, a certain kind of lab, like if you're science, you have some specific lab skills or maybe you are social studies and you have some we the people, skill training or speech and debate, those, those types of skills can go on here as well as leadership, classroom management, um, relationship building, communication, community outreach, um, all of those things that educators do that aren't necessarily on a, a job description, those skills can get added there as well. If you go to edit your skills, people who view your profile will see the first three skills that you have. And so when I click on skills, I can reorder my skills and I wanna make sure that my top three are what I really wanna highlight and really wanna showcase. And so maybe if I'm going into adult education, I might move adult education to my top one or two or three, right? Um, if I wanna go into more of event management, event planning, I might reorder those, um, especially if I'm searching for those types of positions. So make sure that those top three skills really match and help define your personal brand. People can endorse you for your skills. Uh, a long, long time ago, I feel like this used to be really popular. It's not so much anymore, but people do still endorse other people's skills. And basically an endorsement is like, this person said yes, Brandy is really great at, I can vouch for Brandy, she's really great at career development. And so 19 people said yes, I agree, Brandy has the skill of community outreach. So you can put some of those skills on there and you can connect with others and they can then <clears throat> endorse you. The recommendations piece, I have not gotten recommendations for quite a while, but I have also not asked for any recommendations. What you can do as you start to job search or move on to the next level, or maybe you just want to, to boost your profile and let people know like you are for real, you have experience and people are grateful for you and what you do. And so you can request and ask for a recommendation. So maybe your professors, your current supervisors, or your lead teachers, or your principals, maybe you can ask them for some recommendations. And you have to be connected to that person. So you search for the person and then you ask for the recommendation. And you can also give recommendations. So I have had a couple of students ask me if I, could, I would give them recommendations on here. So I've written them recommendations.
projects that you've been a part of. This could be within your school district. This could be within your courses. This could be within your community, things that you've done that aren't necessarily tied to your job. Um, and so I have, or they can be tied to your job. So I work with Marion County Reentry Coalition. Um, I also am a part of a couple different professional organizations in which I have a, an executive board role in those. So I make sure that I put those in here. Um, and then I worked on something for a national organization as well. Honors and awards. So I've got the um, Praxis Award on here. I've got an Undergraduate History Research Award. I've got a Career and Development Professional of the Year Award, Student Impact. So any kinds of things like that that you get, it could be, again, within your job, within the classroom, within the community. You could um, gas yourself up and uh, showcase all of the awesome things that you do. Organizations, so I co-lead two organizations. I serve as an advisor for an organization. So if you do that in your high school or your elementary or your junior high area, whatever area you're, you're at, or maybe you do that as part of your Marian experience, those things can go here. And then another really big part about LinkedIn because your feed is only as good as what you follow, um, is making sure that you're following those thought leaders in your realm of professional life or just things that you're interested in too, in companies and groups and different schools. And so I've looked at a lot of people's profiles that I think are really cool people. And I've looked in kind of stalked their profiles and see who they follow. Uh, and then I start following other those people and then I get suggestions on based on who I'm following. And so that's how I build that up. Uh, <clears throat> and you can creep on my profile all you want. Uh, these are some of the top people that I follow in lots of different areas. I follow a lot of companies because in a lot of different areas because I have a lot of students with a lot of different interests and so I want to make sure that I am staying up to date with different things and companies and opportunities to pass along to them. You can be a part of lots of different groups so I'm a part of a teacher training and education group, a career services professionals, some <clears throat> economic things in Indiana, some inclusive language, equity groups, uh, I'm trying to think, see if I had learning, education, and training. So there's lots of education-related groups on here that you can be a part of too and learn from others. Like that is probably one of the biggest things that I have used and been grateful for for LinkedIn is, my, is the ability to learn from others on this platform and get ideas and hear from different perspectives on things that are in education or coming to the forth, forefront of education and so that I can also understand and be and serve my students better. And then schools are simply just schools. The home page is always going to be that feed of yours. And so again, it's going to be what you follow, what groups you're a part of, who you're connected with, and it's going to show, I just recently started following <clears throat> the TSA because I have some students that are interested in that, so it's going to pop up quite a bit. Um, but it'll say, it'll give you recommendations, and so if you go to my network, all of your invitations will be here. People invite me to some newsletters and things like that. I don't necessarily want any more stuff in my in my email, so I don't usually accept those. But because I have Marion University on here, it says here's people you should know from Marion University. 
because I follow this person, here are some other people that you might be interested in following. Because you went to the school, here are some people. Um, some voices, some events that you might be interested in, groups I might be interested in becoming a part of, voices to amplify, people in Indianapolis, people in higher education, recommended pages I should follow, newsletters, <coughs> and I can always go back to who I'm connected with. I use this, I send, the, I send people messages all the time. Um, and if it's just meeting up with them for some coffee to learn more about what they're doing or um, trying to get them connected with my students because they're in a position that my students might be interested in, I can send them lots and lots of messages uh, jobs. I can look for jobs. It's going to suggest some searches based on my profile. It's going to recommend things for me based on what I put in my profile, which I'll show you here in just a, a minute. But you can also just search. So I can just search by education in Indianapolis or uh, maybe Maybe not education, maybe I wanna search for, I was a social studies teacher, so social studies teacher in Indianapolis. <laughs> and then here are all of the different places that are hiring social studies teachers, middle school, high school, online schools. If you don't wanna work in Indianapolis, you could put whatever else is here. If I'm back on my profile, the way that it recommends jobs to me is if I'm open to. So if you are open to work, which I 100% am always open to work because if somebody's willing to give me a really cool opportunity, I'm not going to make, I'm not, I might, I'll think about it. Um, I'm not going to turn anything down. I'll definitely think about it. You should always be open to work. And so you can edit your job preferences. Here are some titles that I would potentially be interested in. Uh, here's how I might want to work. Where I might want to work. Um, I someday would love to live in San Diego or Seattle. I want to know what companies and what institutions and organizations are out there. So um, I put that on there because I want to learn about those areas. And then you would save that and that would be part of your profile. You can edit that at any time. So maybe you uh, decide you want to potentially live in Miami. So maybe you, maybe you put Miami on there so that you can start to get some information from that area in, that Miami, in Miami. The last section is the featured section. And this is where you can really use this featured section to do exactly what it says. Feature, feature yourself, feature your work, feature your profiles, feature your, um, your projects, your innovative lesson, lessons, all of those things about you, you can use this featured section for. So I link to my website on here. I also link to a panel that I was a part of with the Commissioner for Higher Education, um, a blog post that was written about me, a career development presentation that I did to showcase how I might work and, and operate. Um, I wrote an article on LinkedIn which you can do as well. You can showcase that. And then I think the last piece of my featured is a conference that I was in charge of last year. So um, showcasing that program, I linked that to a document. That was linked to a document. This was a link 
And that is also a link. If I view it, it takes me to um, the work and learn where it lists like, here's what this part, here's what I did. Use that featured section to really showcase all of the cool, wonderful things and the impact that you're having on your school and your community. And then again, here's the website. I make it really easy for people to find me. Your website can have lots of different things in it. Mine is specifically for a, um, a business that I have, a career mentoring business that I have, and it just leads to this page. And then from that page, you can find, you can get to my LinkedIn, you can get to my Facebook, you can get to all of those different things, or you can connect with me if you want to learn more and potentially um, want my services. I designed mine through Wix, which is a free site. I've also designed websites on Weebly, also a free site. Um, pretty easy and helpful to do and use and to build. Um, the graphic here I designed in Adobe Express, but you can also use Canva. Both of those things are, are the same kind of a platform. You design uh, the things that you want. So LinkedIn, there are educators on LinkedIn. A lot of educators that I work with ask me like, well, why do I need a LinkedIn? Um, the purpose of it is to learn. There are so many educators, so many principals, so many school districts, so many thought leaders in education on LinkedIn that you are missing out and you're missing out those connections if you are not on the platform using it efficiently and effectively. And so I'm happy to help you build your LinkedIn if you wanna make an appointment with me or anybody in our office in the exchange. We all do this with students. We all interview students. We all help them with resumes or CVs. We do all of the things related to helping you get to where you want to be. Um, and so if you have any questions, please reach out to me, Brandy Bast. B Bast at Marion.edu. Thank you.